Hey everybody, welcome to my winter 2020 newsletter. It's my first newsletter of the year. I'm always super excited, so I'm looking like a newscaster. I always feel like a newscaster. This is why I always say I'm reporting to you from Paris, France. Here I am in my lovely little apartment that I have rented here in the 12th arrondissement, the most gorgeous little area of Paris. I've been here now a couple of times uh, to sing at the Bastille which is a really interesting experience because it feels like the center of the universe in a lot of ways. Every time you walk by the Bastille, they've got these like, um, uh, like a video advertisements kind of running of all the operas that are going on at the time and commercials. And then they have like the artists and then you get to see all the faces of everybody that's singing uh, in the shows that are currently running. So I walk by the Bastille all the time and see my face <laughs> pass by on the marquee. And it's like, oh, it's really it's awesome. I have to say, I'm very, very fortunate uh, to be able to sing here. I'll be making a role debut at the beginning of this year. Uh, the first performance is this coming Saturday, January 11th. There are 12 performances of The Barber of Seville, Rossini's masterpiece, as we all know. And actually, the first role that I ever sang in college back at LSU was Rosina. And this is the first time I'm ever singing it professionally. So it's been like, what, 17 years? Something like that? It's been a while. Um, but I'm really excited to be singing it again, and it's a beautiful opera. I feel like I never forgot it. Like, I remembered every word, I remembered all the rhythms, it was amazing. And we're doing it almost completely with no cuts. We have a few cuts to some recit, but very little cuts, if any, if any, zero cuts to the actual music. So it's a really, really fun ride. It's a really interesting production, a really active production. So I'm very grateful to have my training going on. I have been meeting my training goals. Uh, last year, end of 2019, my husband and I, you know, we had made a, a resolution that we were kind of quiet about, but we had this resolution that we wanted to run a thousand miles over the course of the year 2019. And we met our goal, we smashed it actually. We ran like a thousand miles 20. 1,020 miles or something like that. I think 1,019 or 1,020. Anyway, we were super excited because um, it's not easy to um, keep up a very regular running schedule in uh, my work and my career and my traveling that I do. And last year we traveled so much. We visited so many new countries. We visited Finland for the first time, Greece for the first time, Brazil for the first time. So amazing to get to go to all these different places and sing there and also run there and get to know the climate and get to know um, just the, the people and, and the terrain. It's really, really, really fun. It's one of the most rewarding things about my job. Um, so, of course, I love running in Paris. Uh, Paris has incredible parks and a beautiful river, of course, a very famous river called the Seine that has a gorgeous running route that goes all along and up and down. So Stephen and I really get our kicks running here. Um, so anyway. 12 performances of the Barber of Seville starting on Saturday and finishing right around Valentine's Day, right before Valentine's Day. Uh, and then Steve and I will hop on a plane and head over to the Metropolitan Opera to New York City for me to make my debut there as La Traviata. Now, I've sung Traviata a couple of times, sang it a couple of times this past summer. I sang it once in Philadelphia. It's the only time I've ever sung it in the United States. And this is the first time that I'll be doing it again in the United States since that those performances in Philly. So it's been about five years. Um, and this beautiful new production that did, that started at the Met uh, last year with Diana Damrell, really gorgeous production, uh, very uh, pr pretty and colorful and picturesque and, you know, large, gorgeous, exciting costumes. I mean, it is really um, traditional. Uh, but it has elements to it that I think are different and interesting and unique. And I'm really looking forward to working with Michael Meyer. I love Michael Meyer. Uh, he and I got along wonderfully when I did his Rigoletto at the Met. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to rehearsing for that. Now, I only get a couple weeks of rehearsal. So I'm going to have to just get into gear because my premiere of La Traviata is on the 26th of February. There are six performances of that. Um, if you can make it to a performance, please, please do. Because from my understanding, I don't have a broadcast scheduled of La Traviata at all, not even on the radio. Uh, it could change and I could be wrong but I'm not pretty sure that I'm not wrong. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that's what it's gonna be. So please, if you can get a ticket to come see La Traviata, it would be such an honor uh, for you to be there and come and support me in the theater. My mom is coming uh, and a lot of my close friends are coming uh, from Louisiana and from all over the world. So I'm very much looking forward to that. It's gonna be my, I think of Violetta as a sister role to Manon because they are very, very similar characters. They have similar um, life journeys. Um, the major difference I, I think between the two of them is, well, there's two big differences. Number one, Violetta is sick and Manon is not. And number two, Violetta makes a totally different choice. Violetta takes the other road. They literally, they come to a point and Manon goes one way and Violetta goes the other way. 
And that's really interesting for me to get to play both characters in the same season. So there we go, Metropolitan Opera. And then finally, the last thing I can tell you guys about that's coming up quite soon is uh, Lucia di Lammermoor. Now, of course, I love singing Lucia di Lammermoor. I've sung it a few times. Um, but it's a role that is always different, always grows, and every production I've done of Lucia has been completely different from the one before it. When I tell you I have sung Lucia five different ways in five different productions and they were like completely different people, I mean it 100%. And this time will be no different. So I'll be in Munich at the Bayerische Staatsoper. It'll be the first major Italian role that I've sung there. Uh, I have sung uh, a role in Mitridate there. It's in Italian, but it's Mozart. And I sang, um, I've sung Les Andes Galantes there. That's a French uh, Baroque. And I have sung Constanze there. It's also Mozart, which I adore. Um, and I sang one performance one of Rigoletto there uh, as a fill-in for an ailing colleague. So I don't really count that one. Besides that, that would be the, this would be the first major production I'm doing of an Italian bel canto role. And of course it's Lucia, which I love and adore. Now this production, I have seen a few videos of it. I've seen some footage of it online. Um, it's very different from anything I've ever done. Of course, like I said, every Lucia is different, but this one is even more different, it goes even further. It's much more modern. <clears throat> the setting, the, the time period is much more modern. So I'm really looking forward to exploring that and getting to see what I can uh, bring to that uh, and what I can take from that. I feel like every production you bring something and then you take something. And then in the end, you end up with something new, you know, something borrowed, something blue. Anyway, um, so those are the things that I can talk to you guys about. The other thing I did want to mention, excuse me, I'm just putting my phone down, is that in New York City, when I'm there for Traviata, there are so many really exciting things going on that I can't announce just now but I will be able to announce when they happen. So that's basically mid-February through mid-March when I'm there. Um, stay tuned for some really exciting announcements. There are two big exciting things. Oh, I'm so going to tell you, but I can't. Okay, there's two things that are happening um, in New York. So if you're around New York, just kind of keep, you know, keep tabs and stuff. The other uh, thing that I can tell you about is that I'm going to be singing a charity concert with the Hamlin Palm series. Uh, that is on Monday, March the 2nd. Now, if you check on my uh, website or... I don't think it's on our website, actually. I don't think it is. But if you check on my social media, I made an announcement about it recently uh, because they had just announced it, that they were doing it. And there are other artists that are featured uh, in this series. But basically what it is is for AIDS funding and AIDS awareness. Um, and it is an organization that encompasses several different organizations. The one that I was asked by was Broadway Cares. Um, and I... Of course, as a performing as a performing artist uh, in New York City, but as a performing artist in general around the world, you know we are always using our voices and using our art form to bring people up to, you know, to provide comfort when people are struggling. This is one of the most rewarding things about our job. It's not just that oh you get to sing on stage and wear nice dresses and wear cool costumes and makeup. There's so much more beyond what we do on stage that our voices do, that our voices bring. And so it's such a blessing and an honor to get to um, perform for charity and perform for, um, for a movement, for a cause. Um, the last thing I want to leave you guys with is my association with Opera for Peace. I talked about it um, in my last video that I made, a very short video that I made on Instagram. Um, and I didn't get to say a whole lot about it. Uh, and to be honest, it's still a very new organization but opera for peace is something that i am an, an ambassador for uh, now and going into 2020 as the month uh, as january kind of unfolds we're going to be talking about different things that we're going to be doing around the world um, and there are several artists that are ambassadors and part of this project and a few new ones even coming on board there are several opera companies that are on board with this project and basically what um what i feel like my my contribution to this can be is that I want to be a voice uh, and a mentor um, and guidance, give guidance to uh, young singers that really need it, that um, not only need financial help but need extra training, uh, certain specific types of training that we don't always have access to, that just aren't available everywhere. Um, I have so many ideas for things that I'd like to um, bring to Opera for Peace and things that I'd like to um, encourage other people to bring uh, to Opera for Peace, so please stay tuned as the month unfolds and we talk more about this organization and its involvement in young people and young singers' lives. When I was younger, and um, you can read all about it, but I, I grew up in Louisiana, I went to LSU, I was there on a scholarship, 
fortunately, because I was a good student and because I got a music scholarship. But if I hadn't had that, I wouldn't have been able to afford to go to college. Um, and when I did the Met competition for the first time, for example, in 2005, I didn't even have enough money to buy a dress. I had to use my winnings, my earnings, that I won in that competition to be able to buy um, a, a concert gown. Uh, and I had the incredible generosity of two ladies from Baton Rouge, they know who they are, who took me shopping at the mall for the first time, nobody had ever done something like that for me, took me shopping at the mall and helped me buy new clothes to take to New York during between the semifinals and the finals, because it's like a week that you're there. If you win the semifinals and you get moved on to the final round of the competition, you're in New York City for a week, and I didn't have New York City clothes. And these two ladies, out of the goodness of their hearts, just took me to the mall and helped me pick out new clothes and bought them for me. Um, and it is one of the most um, generous things anyone's ever done for me because it was one of the first generous things anyone's ever done for me. Um, and this past year in 2019, I won two very, very generous awards that come with a very large amount of money. Um, and there are so many things I want to be able to do with that and do because of that. Um, an Opera for Peace is an opportunity for me to give back more in more ways than just singing and just talking and just sharing on social media. So I, sorry for this long message, but I do want to say that I do want to put it out there that um, this year is, there's so much to look forward to. And I know that the world sometimes is a place where we just are pulling our hair out about what's going on here and what's going on there and all of the disasters that are always seeming to be upon us. You know, but we really can be a guiding light for others. And even if it isn't in a financial way, if it's just um, in, a, in, a, in a friendship way and as a guiding light and, and as an inspiration to other people, um, if I have been that to anyone, then I feel like I've already had a wonderful life. Like, that's it, you know? Um, it is a wonderful life. And I always hold that message in my heart and I try to remember always those two ladies who were so kind to me in Baton Rouge. So with that message, I hope that you have a wonderful new year. I hope that you've had a wonderful holiday season and I wish you all the best for 2020. And I'll see you in our spring newsletter. Take care. Thank you.